Let's see if the green machine summer squash is really a machine. Did my experience with this hybrid squash, I started from seeds in toilet paper tubes three weeks earlier in a cheapo portable plastic greenhouse live up to its name? 100% honest, 100% unsponsored. Now let's get into the video at first bloom. Hey guys, today is June 12th, about nine o'clock in the morning, zone five, Northwest Ohio. Can you see right in the middle, the start of a zucchini? There it is, isn't that nice? Looks like there might be a start right here too. Yep, also started this one in that four shelf cheap greenhouse about three weeks prior to planting. And I started this in toilet paper tube. So let's see how this goes, guys. And I grew this because of James Peregioni's Russian. I tried them last year. I put them back here where I had a mass of pumpkins. Today is June 14th. Northwest Ohio, zone five. And can you see in the middle of there, not just the two blooms, but all of the rest of the starts. And I can see three small zucchini. And since this is kind of close to where the groundhogs can come up, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of standard black pepper. And this is easier than fighting with your shaker. And you're gonna go through a lot as well, but you can see right here's one, right? And there's the other two. And this is probably gonna end up be something with all these ants crawling on it. I am going to take my very finely pointed, very long paintbrush. Now I already have this, I have a art studio. Not necessary for you to go out and buy an expensive paintbrush. You can use Q-tips if you would like. You could actually take this flower out and pick that stamen. These two here are males. The one over here that we're going to pollinate is a female. To tell that this is a male, if we move this stem, first off, the stem's going to be more flexible because it's not going to have more of a solid a stem, which really the female doesn't have a stem. It has a baby zucchini or squash next to it. You can already see that there's ant activity in both of these. So they're already doing a pretty good job and they're probably just going to move down here to the female, okay? You can already see there's ants in there. I move this away, you can see, see I've already got one down here, okay, that flower's closed. I'm looking up here at this, and if you can't move it, some, it's just not flexible, but you can take your hand and feel what that is, and that does not feel like this little skinny very flexible thing so that's your second clue if you cannot move that female then there's a reason because it's a female it's not flexible <laughs> and it is thicker so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my paintbrush and i'm going to get in to this and pick up as much of this pollen as i possibly can and look at all of that on my paintbrush. And I, this paintbrush is tapered, oh, got a little insect there, is tapered to a fine point. And I'm just going to now go to our female flower. And you wanna be doing this in the morning. And you're just gonna try and deposit or rake off all of that male pollen into the female. 
this state right here. That is really it. That's how you hand pollinate. Let's get our second male that has all this beautiful, lovely, and some of that chest fell off. So I want to pick it up. Look at all that. Look at that. Okay, I'm just going to repeat the process. The flowers are based in the morning, so you need to come out here and do this in the morning. You've got about 48 hours before these blossoms close down. Okay, once this female closes up, that means she has closed up shop. That's it. You got the first 48 to get in there and get it done. Once that's closed, you're going to start seeing other males and females that will develop in here. You can take these two that basically I took all of the pollen from anyway, and you can pluck these off so that the energy that are that are in these blooms are no longer taking the energy. It's being pushed to all of the new development within the plant. Okay, another important detail. After you pollinate, let's say later tonight I need to water, you wanna get down here and water at the base of the plant because you do not want to water out this pollen until this flower closes up and that's it that pollen can't get out then so we need to prune this zucchini plant down for a few reasons one airflow two so that the bees can actually find these flowers and pollinate for us and they usually do a pretty good job with zucchini three powdery mildew okay fourth reason when you cut these leaves what do we already know that energy that would have went to that leaf is now gonna go to that fruit when I'm done with that I'm gonna powder it up with some black pepper so that groundhogs will stay off okay so I am halfway done can you see the difference Look at that nice big long stalk. All that air can now travel in and out between those plants and those stems and those fruits. And here is the pile of what I've cut. I'm just using regular normal scissors. There's really not a special way to cut this. Okay, look at the difference in that plant. Okay, mind my mess. I'm gonna mow tomorrow, but that is a lot of leaves I took off of this one area. That is it. Now we can see some of our zucchini a little bit better. And I put a little seven dust on here because I do have squash bugs. Oh my God, I've already killed him. Oh no, look at him, he's resourceful. Well, I'll kill him in a minute. So much air in here already. All right. So, probably need to do that again in about a week. On the back of your leaves. So if you see squash bugs, you're gonna have eggs, okay? They look like tiny little coppery beads. These ones are spaced out. You don't normally see them that quite that spaced out. They're usually jumbled up. And sometimes they'll be on a couple spots of your leaf. And what you want to do is just take your hand or your finger and then just put it over the eggs. They're not going to hurt you. Just pinch that part off and put it into soapy water. Regular dish soap water in a jar. And this is also what you're going to do when you are out there gardening and you see squash bugs, pick them up, put them in this jar. Um, they can't really get out and then they're going to drown. If I would have just leave these to mow, these are so little that they're not going to get destroyed. You do need to take the time and look for that. And this is also another reason why we are pruning to get those squash bugs off and those eggs off from underneath 
our leaves. They are underneath them, guys. All right. All right, you guys, today is June 26th, and I am out here checking for these squash bugs, and right there they are. And you will see them a lot of times to where they look like they are just linked and chained together. Um, what I can do is I can flick them off and stomp on them. Okay, it might be easier for you. Or I just set my jar out here and you can see, I've just put one in here, it's drowned, it's dead. And I'm just keeping it right here underneath or by the zucchini plant. Let's have a quick look before we move on. Probably need to get those weeds back there. Okay, we've got the little one, that one there. This one over here. Oh, and look, there's another squash. Okay, I'm gonna tend to these squash bugs right now. All right, you guys. So I once again trim this up, try to get things on the bottom leaves cut out. But as I'm doing that, I am checking all of the leaves. And you can see they've got more squash bug eggs and I just killed a couple of them myself. Now, <clears throat> those don't have any over here, but you can see like I've got a little hole here and here. Uh, we've had a lot of hot weather, so I just started really holing out these leaves so I don't take the entire leaf off because I don't want to burn anything up. Also back here, I have a little mole hole right there that I've just covered up. There's, oh, can you hear it? What? Oh, so I'm dealing with that too. And I have got another open flower down here, which is female. You can see that from the side. And I've already pulled and pulled back the leaves, this male flower. And we're just gonna take that stamen and we're just gonna circulate it around the female. Okay. This is it. Just rubbing it on there, rubbing it on the sides. squeakiness is the leaf over there. It's the concrete. And I'm just going to twirl that around, twirl it around, so that I can get the pollen on the other side of it. And that's good. Okay, so I can also take this into the house. As I can see, I've got a little bit more pollen on this side is this one right here is also a female and just in case that these other males out here are not flowering when she opens i have a little bit of a back up here see that pollen down there in the crevices i have this in a teeny tiny little dish with a little bit of water part of its flower to keep it out to keep the pollen out of that water and I'm just gonna put it in the fridge. Hey guys, today is July 1st, and it looks like once again, this needs to be pruned. This will be the third pruning. This is the green machine. I want you guys to look under here. And I am starting to get a nice viable zucchini. And this is usually about the size that I to be, so I think that I'm going to cut this with some scissors, I don't want to pull it off. And you can see a squash bug right there. The other thing I want you to see down here is, I really thought this being called a grain machine would be producing a whole lot more for me. So I'm not quite sure if it's a machine or not. So we'll see. This is July 2nd. And I have been really pleased Look at that, I got one girl in here, obviously. 
and after I cleared this out, you can see I've got a lot that are just kind of dying. They're not making it past a certain point. That might be okay. So I've got another one coming up here. And I also have another one right here. So I have a lot of plants in here in a very small area. So that's also oops, another one here. Why I keep pruning this down so that the bees can come in here and pollinate. I can see them to pollinate. And I do have like right here's a little ground hole mole. They are constantly in here. I don't know if they're disturbing the roots underneath this plant or what, but that is the situation thus far. Check out my Etsy shop, T-Shirt Garden Company, featuring gardening, no mo may, sewing, tiny house, zen meditation designs, link in box below. All right, you guys, today is July 3rd, and can you see how big and open these are? There's our female. We've actually got one or two males. No, there's two males because there's one hiding back here. So I'm going to take my paintbrush and I am going to get some pollen off of this male. And remember, you can see the long skinny one is the male. Okay, got a lot of pollen on my brush. This brush is a nice little extension if you have problems bending down. All clean, all good. And I'm sure I'm gonna have some bee activity seeing as how I just, you know, clipped everything, pruned everything and it looks like they really just came to life. Um, what do I got on the other side? By the way, I keep this bucket here. So when I water, I am not bruising my plant at all. The hose can go around this. Uh, let me move it a little bit closer, which is where I usually keep it. Okay, do you see how the pollen collects underneath that? Don't forget to scoop that up. And you definitely want to make sure that you're also in the middle. It's hard for me to tell on camera. There we go. That you're getting this in the middle, on the sides. And sometimes if you feel like you've moved it, you can kind of shake your brush tap and shake your brush off. <clears throat> so it will kind of get on top of there. Just the remains. July 4th, and I am going to cut this zucchini. Alright. Let's have a peek at that. Pretty nice. Hey guys, today is July 6th. We had a lot of rain, which took down a lot of those blossoms that were pretty viable. See, here's another one down here. The rain just takes it down. I don't even think it had the opportunity to open yet. Also, when you have something like this that you have cut and it's pretty much up here, it's going to collect rain if you have a hard rain. And, yep, see, can you see right here? See the water in that one? And it will rot that out. See, this one here too. Can you see the water in that? Okay. Nothing you can do about that. You can't control it. You can go along and cut it right now if you want to get the majority of it out. But this is just what happens. You're planting in nature and nature happens. So don't be so hard on yourself. Because you're going to have other things that are going to come along and then reward you in other ways. That one's doing good too. Alright, look. What's this one going to be? That looks like that's going to be a male flower. Got lots more opportunities in this plant. All right, you guys, here is our zucchini. Got the tips clipped off. 
got them in my compost container. I'm gonna put this through my nicer dicer and this nice little fine one. And I am going to make a red onion and zucchini um, chutney so that we can make some nachos out of it. Okay, so zucchini can cook down pretty quickly. So I am going to actually make these really long and skinny. That way, by the time it cooks up, I'm gonna have a little bit of substance on my chip. Can you kind of see that there? We'll see it better as we go. Okay, you can also see that we don't have a lot of seeds and they're not really watery on the inside of this. This is what I do with my cilantro. This is last year's, I froze it. You can see it has the stem and all. I add just a little bit of water and I am going to try and kind of make this thick cilantro soup. My zucchini nice and chunked up. I've got some red onions that are already in there. Probably about 10 minutes so I can get those cooked down so those take longer than zucchini. Blend it up, some cilantro, stems, leaves and all that were in the freezer. And I am going to use this as a flavor base instead of a taco packet. I'm going to add some salt, garlic powder, it's going to be all good. This one is without sour cream. This one's got a little bit of sour cream and I've topped them with this cilantro lime salsa cremosa medium. So it's got a little bit of kick here. I'm enjoying it. Mm, tastes so good. These kind of look like, um, like green chilies on here, but remember it's the zucchini. I put one medium sized zucchini for two red diced onions and some cilantro sauce and that was about it and i let it cook down okay so not really a diet solution that's not why i chose to do this just a different way of using some zucchini up rather than the typical you know, zucchini bread, sauteed, grilled zucchini, or in spaghetti primavera, which is still really good. Um, and look at this. I made myself a black cherry Kool-Aid pie. Hey guys, today is the 13th of July. I had myself a sinus infection for probably the last three, four days, and look at that. There's little baby squash bugs right there. But this zucchini down here has not really grown since the last video that I've taken of it, which I would imagine is at least five days, if not more. So, um, yeah, I find that to be weird. It's not dead. The blossom on the end has died because that's what it's supposed to do. Oh, oh it's rotted out. Oh, my God. I'm not quite sure if the green machine is a machine or not. Really not sure about that. I'm gonna keep going with this. I'm gonna cut this. Continue to basically get almost nothing. Is this worth my time and my effort? I'm really thinking that. I'm really kind of aggravated with it. It's a lot of effort for not a lot of return at all. Okay, so there we go. It's got a little bit of sponginess at the bottom, of course. Now, I want you to know, even though I had a sinus infection, I came out and watered everything because things need to be watered. I did not put all this investment in here not to come out for 15, 20 minutes to water things. However, zucchinis are really tricky because they want about an inch of water a week, but they also like for the first four inches of their soil to be moist. Can't overwater them, can't underwater them, but you cannot control the rainfall that happens. So that also in zone five makes zucchini sometimes rot out real quick on you. 
It really is going to depend on the rain in some situations. These are some real thorny ones, too, I can tell you that. Yeah, look at all that. I, I mean, look, it's producing flowers. It's producing little girls. I don't know. I don't know. I think I might just let it go and see what happens. I'm conflicted, guys. Which means that it really has created squash bug issues right down the line for me. Alright guys, now let's take a break and let's look actually what our seed packets and what our catalogs are saying. And all of these right here do not carry Green Machine. So let's concentrate on the three that I, the three catalogs that I normally keep and have handy that actually do. Okay, and the first up is gonna be Jung's. Obviously, that's where I got it from. I like the way that Jung's puts a lot of the planting information here on the packet for us. It's very easy to read. I don't have to go and search for this. Okay, it tells you how to harden stuff off as well. It also tells you to fertilize soil prior to transplanting and to fertilize every three weeks requires warm growing weather and is easily killed by frost. Uh, okay, so I am not one to really be fertilizing. I constantly amend my soil with compost. So if that's a requirement, that might be out for me. Green Machine Hybrid, 45 days, a broad disease resistant package makes this the ideal choice for organic gardeners. Widely adap adapted plants have an open bush habit with moderate spines. You do need to use gloves when you're pruning these. Making harvest fairly easy. As the name suggests, this variety cranks out incredible amounts of seven to eight inch straight dark green fruits throughout the season. Intermediate resistance to cucumber mosaic virus, powdery mildew, watermelon mosaic virus, and zucchini yellow mosaic virus. Keep plants healthy and productive. And you can see one packet is 10 seeds and it is $4.35. So, also in Pine Tree, 10 seeds, $4.25, and it's basically saying the same thing here. It does give you the added information of it takes 7 to 10 days for this to germinate. Up here, however, it gives some good tips on universally how to start indoors, outdoors, when to harvest, and tips for the actual soil. And it does tell you that it will benefit from growing on black plastic and by using row covers for weeds, insect control, and more rapid growth. Fertilize on a regular basis by watering with compost tea. All right, last one. Now I am in Johnny's. You can get a packet for $5.40. The packet is 30 seeds, so that's not too bad at all. That's probably your best bargain there. Everyone else was 10 seeds, so you've tripled that for about, what, a dollar more? Maybe a dollar fifty more? Here are the catalogs that actually have them. Pine Tree, Johnny's, and Jung's, which is where I bought mine from and they're all 2022. Now let's summarize. So Green Machine, it is a hybrid, so that's very difficult for you to save your seeds year after year. If you're interested in doing that, you should grow as many as you can and let them go to seed and harvest all of those seeds that first initial year as the crossbreeding will start to degrade each and every year that you keep planting and keep using your harvested seeds. 
So we need to have this in here one half inch to one inch direct sew into the ground. You need at least 70 degree soil temps, sprouts in seven to 10 days, full sun, which is six to eight hours of direct sun. This is also organic. It takes 45 days for you to get your first fruit. It is a open plant habit. Moderate spines, I require gloves, seven to eight inch squash is produced you do need to water well it loves compost either manure or tea and has that broad disease resistance but what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pull them because let's come out here and look at this vining zucchini but look i have an abundance of four zucchinis here right in a row that i need to harvest and i have three more in the house that i haven't even cut and I'm not a super big fan of zucchini. However, this one is pretty fantastic. I mean, the Italians know what they're doing. They know what they're talking about. It is a very sweet zucchini. I love that it vines. I have not seen any squash bugs back here. I haven't seen any problems at all with this. By the way, this is not powdery mildew. This is the way that this actually grows as part of the pattern of the leaf is what I should say. Look at that, it is absolutely fantastic. And you see how slender these are? So, I mean, that's my fingernail nail bed. Now look at that in contrast to the girth of that. It's tiny. There's no seed in there at all until you get down to the bulb of this. The smaller the bulb, the less water, the smaller seeds. And this, the flesh is wonderful on it too, which I have to tell you I was a little bit reserved because I don't like yellow squash. So I thought, well, I might not like the green squash, just the black squash or zucchini, squash zucchini, they're interchangeable almost. But this has been fantastic. It has been a grow up a trellis kind of a dream here. And it is an abundance, there's no problem with it. So instead of me wasting space over there on the green machine, which is now my second year of trying to grow that or get that to be abundant get that to be a machine as they say it is uh, i think i might just pull it out and be done with it because of the squash bug problems it's not doing anything i can use that valuable garden real estate for something else and obviously i am not wanting for zucchini whatsoever because i'll have another one soon and these do not take long at all to grow so i'll have this one i might possibly have this one here and i might need just a little bit of a break from zucchini since i'm not a huge zucchini lover and i've already got three in the house so i think that's going to be my decision here back up here with green machine i think um the ruling's in i'm not really impressed with the green machine second year in a row i have tried it the last one that i had i gave away it's, mm, this it's not the one out there that i just showed you is the superior zucchini to my taste i think i'm just gonna rip it out and i'm gonna be done with it and I am going to acknowledge the fact that this is not the zucchini variety for me, for my zone, for the fact that I'm in zone five. I, we get a lot of rain. This one back here has flowed with all the rain, okay? This one, yeah, she lets you know. And got more squash bugs coming, and this time, they went ahead and decided to lay their eggs on top of the leaf instead of underneath. I don't know, are they bold and brazen? And I'm going to dig around here and I've got lots of 
kitchen compost that I'm just going to bury in place. I feel like that would be more useful for me to rebuild this, this soil than for me to keep trying to make something happen that isn't going to happen. And sometimes as gardeners, that's just what happens. Not every single variety is made for every single gardener's likes, wants, needs, zones, soil conditions, weather conditions, and so forth. This is not the zucchini for me. I gave it a good college try two years in a row, and I'm done with it. You know what I'm not done with? These generally cucumbers. You want to talk about output? This, I thought I would have output with this because it's machine. This is a machine. Almost every single spacing here has got a little baby cucumber on it. They're self-pollinating. They, look, look at this. There's... Look at all of the possibilities for these cucumbers here. So I don't have a traditional garden. I've got things in pots. I've got things on a skinny um, driveway garden. I'm growing a lot of things up. Pots, I've got stuff in the front. I'm on my stair railing. I've got some tomato bins back here that we just looked at. I've got a nice square back here. And I got some stuff up front, which is mainly shady. So when I plant something, it needs to be productive. If I'm going to put the water and the time and the effort into it, I want that, hello, to be productive. This has not been productive for me at the level I need it to be for the last two years. So I'm going to make an executive decision and I'm done with it. Hey guys, so I did dig that green machine zucchini up and I've got my compost kitchen scraps in here and I'm just going to compost in place, toilet paper rolls, FYI, make great little air pockets, worms love the cardboard, so I'll just toss those in there as well. I am going to throw this in the garbage because of the eggs that are still on there. I don't really want to screw around or mess around with that. But I do want to thank you so much for taking your time. I will link this video for this awesome, awesome vining zucchini. And I will also link this cucumber, which is a machine. So you guys can view those because those videos will turn out excellent. Thank you so much for watching and I invite you again to subscribe as I have been gardening for over 40 years and have a lot to teach, show, grow, review, experiment with, and my favorite, a specific variety, everything deep dive. So let's try new things together, mix it up, and have a glorious day.